Today, I'm sharing a Braggit recipe with you. This is an IPA and a mead kind of combo smashed into this thing that we call a Braggit. So let's get started. So this recipe today is an IPA Braggit. So it's the hoppiness of an IPA, which if you haven't had an IPA, they're generally pretty hoppy. That's kind of what they're known for. And then of course, honey. Now this recipe uses raspberry blossom honey, but you could use arguably any other kind of honey out there. The raspberry honey in this instance provides a little bit of more interesting complexity, maybe some more fun mead notes. A braggot is a beer and a mead combo smashed together. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you the recipe card on screen and we'll, talk, we'll kind of talk about like how to make this. I know lots of people who are watching this video might be more familiar with the process of making mead, which is arguably simpler than beer. So I'll give you a step-by-step -step and you'll get to see it happen. So we used for this recipe today, some two row. We used six pounds, which let me be clear. These are malts or grains you can buy at a brew shop or online. So we used two row malt. We used um, six pounds of that. One pound of honey malt, which helps to accentuate the honey character happening. 0.1 pounds of crystal malt and three and a half pounds of raspberry honey in our circumstance. But again, any honey you want. This uses all mosaic hops, which is good. And then we ended up using the White Labs Ale Blend WLP 060. So that's our recipe, our recipe card. Now here's kind of your steps on how to do this. So we started with about five and a half gallons of water. You can use RO water or spring water, whatever you have, but we had five and a half gallons of water. We put it in our electric all-in-one brewing system. You could do this brew in a bag style where you actually do it in a bag with like a stove or something like that. You don't have to have the electric system. I just have it. So there's ways to do this brew in a bag where you're actually over a stove or over a flame. We got our water, our five and a half gallons of water up to 150 degrees. We are now prepared to mash this brew. So we're gonna take all of our grain, which already has been milled basically for us, and we're gonna pour it into the container. This electric system has its own like grain basket. You might have to do a brew in a bag style where you put it in the bag and then you put the bag into the whole container there. So just think about that, whatever you wanna do. Your mash temp will be 150 degrees Fahrenheit. We are going to mash our grains for an entire hour. So we're basically, with our electric system, we have the water circulating over the top, meaning that it continues to flow and you know the water is mixed in. It becomes wart after the grains are introduced. So we take our grains out after 60 minutes. So you'll pull your, your bag out and let it kind of drain. And for this, I took my, my whole little basket out we sparged with one gallon of water. So I put a whole gallon of warm, very, very, well, I say warm, hot water over the top of that, trying to get close to 150 degrees. And that helps to rinse any extra sugars out of the grain. You could, you know, of course, pour that water over your bag and that'll kind of rinse the grains. We are then getting our whole container up to a boil. So we have a, a volume of roughly, I want to say six point two five to maybe six and a half gallons of wort happening here. We get it up to a boil and we're gonna start some hop additions. Our first hop addition is 0.75 ounces of the mosaic, like I said, we're using, and that is for uh, 60 minutes. The next one, so the, the timeline, this is kind of weird. We're boiling for 60 minutes total. At the beginning, we throw in 0.75 ounces of mosaic and then 30 minutes into our timing, you're gonna throw in another half ounce of the mosaic hops. Then uh, at the last, let's see, I gotta go back to my notes. At the last 10 minutes, you're gonna add 0.75 ounces again. And then at flame out, when the brew is done boiling, after the hour is done, you're gonna add another ounce of 
uh, hops into that. So you'll see me dumping all of those in. I used a hop spider. Lots of people suggest just to throw it into the container with the boiling. So we boiled all of those for an hour. We then went ahead and cooled down our whole wort, what we have there. And with a wort chiller, you can just let it set for a while, of course. And we moved it into a new bucket. Now, I had weighed out my honey. I had poured my three and a half, or really it turned out to be a little over that three point it was like three pounds and 11 ounces of raspberry honey. I got a little generous with my pour. We poured that into a bucket and then we racked that wort once that had cooled into that bucket there. That allowed us the ability to just go ahead and take our drill and stir up the honey and the wort mixture. mixture. So once that was all stirred up, we were able to take a gravity reading. Our starting gravity was 1.054. Now, because this is a beer and we use some grain, it's not gonna fully ferment out to 1.000. So we, we just know that ahead of time. So once we had our gravity reading, we poured that back in. Our last hop addition is a dry hop. Now you could do this one of two ways. I was kind of quickly going through this brew, uh, quickly fermenting and making the process go by fast. So I went ahead and took my one ounce of hops and I went ahead and threw it into the primary fermentation right as it started. I knew the fermentation would end within seven days, so I was comfortable doing this. So alongside our hops, we'd also pitched our yeast. We threw our yeast packet in there and we mixed it up. The other way you can do a dry hop is you can let it ferment however long you wanna go, and then you can add your dry hops in later on. This still needs to dry hop for seven days, so important that you do that, dry hop for seven days. You could do it right at the beginning or wait but we added those hops in, we let them set, no hop spider. Seven days later, this brew was done fermenting and I was a, pretty confident that it was done because I took a gravity reading and like I said, we're not gonna go dry. We ended at 1.004 as our kind of final gravity there. We went ahead and racked from there into a new container. I, I did something kind of unorthodox with this braggot. I stabilized this brew because I knew I was going to back sweeten with honey to get more honey character coming from it. I also knew that I was gonna be able to force carbonate it. If I was bottle carbonating this brew, I would forego the addition of more honey. I would probably need to back sweeten it with something that wasn't fermentable, kind of taboo in the beer world, but you could back sweeten with a non-fermentable sugar and then you'd add priming sugar to each, to the whole container basically and then you would bottle it. And that would set for two or three weeks, create bottle carbonation in each bottle, and then you'd have a carbonated brew. We didn't do that. We had stabilized this brew with potassium sorbate, potassium metabisulfite. We then took and uh, waited 24 hours. We added about two pounds of raspberry honey, and we got this up to about 1.0, I think the final gravity was about 1.0, one eight in that range. Our final step was to clear it. I like this thing called Sparkaloid, which is a powder you can get. I have a whole bunch right here. I basically put about a tablespoon of Sparkaloid in a cup with some water. I boiled that for a 15, 20 seconds and added it into the container. And then we let it set for a couple days. From that point, it was clear and we went ahead and kegged it. So we put it into a keg and there's a forced carbonation method where you put CO2 on it for X amount of days at X pressure. I have a video on how to do this if you would like to check it out. Overall, this beer, that whole timeline is like within the three week mark, um, given that I let it set for a couple days after dry hopping, I had kind of just let it, let it be and then we let it set a couple days after stabilizing because I let time go. So, and then of course, the sparkaloid took some time and then forced carbonation took time. So we're like three weeks old on this beer, not very old at all. Let's go get a pour of it and see what it's like. I have not done a lot with braggots, but I think 2024 is my year to really invest in them. Part of my tasting today is to tell you what I think of it. However, you can't really just trust my opinion because I'm one person. Um, although I, I feel like I give good 
feedback and telling things. Uh, I also sent this off to some competitions, which we'll talk about here in a second, how they did. I don't know how they did, because let me say that I've already sent them off, judging what would happen for a probably three or four weeks, so they could tank, I don't know, but we'll talk about it in a second. So, <clears throat> pretty good looking brew, tons of bubbles coming from the bottom there, not super clear, that's okay, but this thing is definitely nice and carbonated. Here we go. Oh man. I sure hope this does well at this competition because I think it's fantastic, honestly. It's got such a crisp but nice balance between honey and the overall like IPA hoppiness. The mosaic hops are not too strong. Part of the reason I chose the mosaic was because the uh, flavors described, and as I was reading on the big old chart from this, are mango, stone fruit, rosy or floral, Bubblegum, tropical citrus, grassy, pine, earthy, herbal spice. So you have a bunch of these kind of tropical fruit flavors that seem to pair really well with the raspberry honey in my mind. And I think they executed well. The overall package of this thing being the hoppy mosaic, you get some of those tropical fruity flavors with the sweetness from the honey. While it is sweet for a beer, um, I kind of wanted a sweeter side. You could do this in a drier fashion where it was truly dry, but I wanted it to be sweeter. I wanted honey character to be prominent, and it is. You get honey, you get the, ras uh, the raspberry blossom honey popping through. It's just, I really like it. And like I said, I sent this off to some competitions. So I hesitate to do this, and I'm not gonna let my future me uh, say no to this, even if they tank. I sent this off to two competitions, and here are both of their scores. No idea how they did. They could have tanked. They could have done well. They could have done middling. But I think this brew is very good. And so I think there's a balance between looking at scores that I might put on a screen. Let's say one got a 28, which would be really low, and knowing that I enjoy this brew. Because the judge who might taste my brew might not like this profile, but I do, so who's more right? Well, at the end of the day, you, the taster, the person who made it is right. So I don't know what's gonna happen, but hopefully those things go well. This recipe is a lot of fun. You should go and make it yourself. I haven't done a lot with uh, braggots, but my plan is to. And I know my buddy doing the most is a braggot aficionado. And so maybe I'll throw in a clip real fast of him tasting this, a quick little tasting note. So I'll throw it to that. BC, taste this thing. Okay. Raspberry honey, IPA. Dude, that's super clear. Uh-huh. I, I it lied. No. Um, I did clear it with sparkle. Oh, wow. Well. So I wish I could say it was My nah, man. It smells good, it smells fruity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is a lot sweeter than I thought it was gonna be. It's back sweetened, yes. <laughs> That's an interesting choice. Um, let me get back in there. <laughs> yeah. I, I was expecting I a nice, yeah. like dry, mm. fruity IPA, and I got hit with candy. Mm -hmm. I've never back sweetened a braggot, but I thought it'd be interesting to do so. Okay. Now with now that tempered I'm expectations, yeah. That's not bad. I think this the, the back sweetening, I'm guessing you used honey. Yep. Raspberry a honey. little bit covers up the malt character, so I'm not picking yeah. up the beeriness as mm -hmm. much. The hops profile, did you do a dry hop on mm -hmm. this? That big dry hop? It's a decent size, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, the, there so. is just a fresh, fruity, uh -huh. zesty hoppiness in there that is like really nice, but I want just a little bit less sweetness. Yeah. Because um, the sweetness feels like it's fighting against those fresh, zesty flavors. It's definitely the most interesting braggot I've ever tried. It's, it's um, at the back sweetening, I really wanted to lean into the raspberry honey. That was kind of my goal there. Because obviously the and hops. raspberry honey is great for stuff like this. Right. Um, so IPA is my, you know, oh, you know, it's my favorite beer style. Yeah. I'm clearly a hipster. It's my favorite pizza beer style mm. because I like how it strips everything. Like it's so fresh and it strips right. everything from your mouth. So every bite of pizza is like a fresh bite. You go back and forth, back and forth. I feel like this would be too sweet mm -hmm. to be a pizza palate cleanser yes. because it's gonna match the sweetness of the sauce. Yeah. 
you know. And so I, I guess what I'm saying is I wouldn't call this an IPA because I think that is, oh. um, that's setting up the wrong expectation. But it's really interesting, and it's not bad. That's interesting. So my brain, when I think IPA, I think just really hoppy. And that's where my, mm. my, I feel like this is pretty hoppy forward. But I do understand what you're saying though. Like, categorically, how, where does this fall? Yeah, you know? yeah. And, you know, it's, it's about what I think the average person would expect if you said, you know, here's a honey ale. Yep. You'd probably expect it to be less hoppy, but I think that's what it communicates in your mind, yep. um, is, is it's a beer with honey. It's not what I think of when I think of a braggot, which has honey character, but isn't necessarily sweet. Yeah. Generally. Well, thanks for tasting it. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I've always been curious what back sweetening a brag, bra, back sweetening a braggot would be like. And so now you know. Now I have a frame of reference. I did the research for you. Again, he has not tasted it yet. So I have no idea what he said. Maybe he liked it, maybe he didn't. But that's his opinion. I hope you've uh, maybe found a new recipe to try. Try this as a brew in the bag, brew in the bag, brew in a bag uh, on electric system. Try this with some other kinds of honey. Again, raspberry honey is not the only honey in the world. You could use this with any other one. Maybe try it with a different hop, find something else. Regardless, this recipe is fun. I'm gonna be doing more braggots in the future and I hope you will join me for those videos. We're on the road to 75,000 subscribers. Will we get there this year? I hope so. We'll do it with your help. So go ahead and hit subscribe if you haven't yet. And of course, if you want to support the channel, there's some links below. And I hope you will go and uh, check out some more man-made mead content. Go make some mead. I'll see you later.